There's been a fair bit of discussion about Genshin Impact and its liberal usage of Breath of the Wild as a point of inspiration. From the look of the grass and how it burns, the models and animations for some of the fauna, the design of the puzzles, the mechanic of climbing anything so long as you have enough stamina for it. Of course, gliding too. Clearly the developers at MiHoYo really enjoy Breath of the Wild. I don't care to spend a ton of time on this because firstly, barring evidence that assets were stolen, most of this is completely fine. Secondly, I think a fair bit of the outcry, at least from folks here in the West, has been a result of Yellow Peril or Nintendo fans being too defensive. We all knew Breath of the Wild was going to redefine open world game design. To some degree, that means having elements straight up lifted into other titles. Genshin Impact does so while putting some twists of its own into the mix, from the focus on the free-to-play gacha mechanics to being distinctly a creation of a Chinese development team. This is particularly evident in the second area of Liyue. Unlike the relatively straightforward European fantasy style of the opening area, Liyue is inspired by mythic Chinese fiction and traditional art. Numerous tall, thin peaks of luscious mountains poke through a thin, low-lying layer of cloud cover. When the orange rays of the sun break through the mist, it's absolutely stunning. The varying elevation is used to superb effect for the open-world puzzles, from hiding the common treasure chest in scenic little nooks, to a mysterious table sitting next to a mountaintop pond. It's a place that not only has layers on a physical variety, but a mechanical one too. One in particular leads to a floating island above the tallest peak. With some thoroughly planned navigation of the various mountains via rock climbing, hiking, and gliding all around to find three statues amongst the heavenly scenery, you can reach the summit. Honestly, it's one of the most impactful moments I've had in a game all year. Not only because of the environmental puzzle design, but because of the casual nature of it. The way it feels like I could come and go as I please. My engagement is on my terms. If I want to meander around an area that has nothing to do with the statues or chase down the game's version of the Korok seeds, I can. If I just want to relax and enjoy the view while whipping up some meals, that's fine too. With a lot of dungeon-heavy games, be they Zelda or Persona, I often find myself mentally exhausted by them. They're a taxing affair of commitment, if nothing else. Once I'm in a dungeon, that's it. That's what I'm doing for the next hour or two. Which isn't always what I want. Especially in a game like Breath of the Wild with its cozy, at one with nature vibes. Now, I adore Breath of the Wild, but one area I agree with detractors on is the dungeons. I often find myself anxiously dreading what lays before me as I realize I'm about to enter one and then mentally exhausted by the time I finish. But while I think the four divine beasts are not particularly great, my desired solution is far different than what I hear from so many. Most folks seem content with the notion of going back to more traditional designs with some even saying Breath of the Wild is a good game, but a bad Zelda game. Which is honestly a bit eye-rolling given the fact that the whole point is to be a big new departure from the formula that had traditional dungeons aplenty that people had grown increasingly tired of over the last several installments. If you want traditional Zelda dungeons, may I suggest one of the couple dozen worthwhile Zelda games out there or the plethora of copycats from over the decades. Anyway, what I hope we get from Breath of the Wild 2 is one of two things, or maybe a bit of both. Firstly, what came to mind while watching the fantastic trailer over and over was to make them a true commitment of time, skill, resources, and preparation. While I just criticized time commitment earlier, that is largely because so many dungeons are rather low stakes with familiar tropes to solving puzzles that you can work through at a monotonous pace. It's why I enjoy the bite-sized shrines with their far more clever and open-ended approach. They feel fresh, not only for the series, but so different from what I grew accustomed to from most big AAA games. There's also an emphasis on the cave being hostile territory. Something Breath of the Wild employs in the open world quite well with different climates that I would like to see further expanded upon. The fact that Link and Zelda have to bring along a big old beast of burden to carry supplies plays into this desire. Having to stock up and even then maybe you'll need to rely upon the limited resources within. Having navigation itself be purposeful, planned, and treacherous if you don't. Truly, where the pair are delving doesn't want them there and I hope that comes through in the design. Now, Genshin Impact isn't that type of game. 
It's not that it lacks friction, but rather such is provided by more typical RPG and gotcha grinds. Which has been totally fine, even for someone like me who despises the tedious and wasteful time sinks of so many modern open worlds. In its casual nature of futzing around, solving a handful of puzzles out in the world, maybe doing some dailies, and then one or two story quests, I've been playing it a few hours a day, getting my fill from that. It's not quite that at peace with nature tone Breath of the Wild has going on, but relaxing nevertheless. This is particularly true the further in you are, especially as you get to the aforementioned Liyue and the region of the Huanggang Stone Forest. In this remote area, far from the bustling streets of the Harbor City or Wangshu Inn, it's just your party and the steep stone slopes. Decaying old rope bridges string together forgotten guard posts, now populated by scattered hillichurl patrols and the rare traveler. Two disciples of a dying order peer down into the deep valley, their eroding presence across all of Tavat holding on no stronger than many of the structures that dot in the valley. Armand pine trees sprout defiantly from the sides of cliffs. A neon orange rock juts out from one of the tallest plateaus as if signaling to any would-be treasure hunter that the greatest prizes of all lay far above the clouds. At times, Breath of the Wild hints at these open concept dungeons, spaces within the overworld that string together a series of puzzles and fights to be something more, most notably Eventide Island, which Genshin almost has, though it certainly takes a different road once you arrive. This is what it plays with better than the game it so clearly borrows from. This is what I want Breath of the Wild 2 to go all out with, less okay here you are in the capital D dungeon, Time to clear it room by room in a mostly set order so that you can reach the big boss in a secluded chamber. Rather, have them be open air. Have it be possible for players to stumble in and out of them from any angle or approach. Let them be like the shrines, but more intertwined. Lean into the rest of Breath of the Wild's open, nature-centric design. I wasn't sure exactly what that looked like when I thought about this a couple years back, but with Genshin in hand, I now do. I want entrancing locales, to have multi-layered puzzle design that doesn't explicitly force the player's mind into Zelda dungeon mode. You could still have puzzle rooms, isolated moments where the game recognizes you've done a bunch of work outside across great distances, but now within these four walls is a discrete setup with its own mechanics. I want genuine mystery. I want to come to a place and not easily figure everything out or at all. To have something like the strange table by Mountaintop Pond or the grave markers scattered across the peaks with vague writings upon them. Speaking of something I might never understand that exists beyond Link's engagement with Hyrule, which Breath of the Wild has in spades across his open world. Hints of lives lived and lost over the course of the hundred years Link was gone. Don't get me wrong, I love stuff like the uneasy, haunted, and twisting halls of the Forest Temple, but future Zelda dungeons don't have to so strictly stick to one theme. To simply do so because that's the way it's always been feels like such a cliche. I don't need the forest, water, fire, desert, and so on progression anymore. Give me something truly wondrous and new. Give me something like the rest of Breath of the Wild that captured what I imagined games could be when I was 7 years old racing across Hyrule Field in Ocarina of Time. That's the true majesty of what Breath of the Wild can be, and what games like Genshin Impact have rightfully identified as the defining characteristics worth imitating and improving. Breath of the Wild is the result of Nintendo taking influence from other developers and putting a new iconic vision atop it all. So let's push that further. Let's have the game that somehow surpasses an experience deemed unsurpassable by numerous devoted fans. And that doesn't happen by sticking to the past, but by looking outwards and adapting, iterating upon what the international community of game developers have accomplished, Genshin Impact and its explicit reverence for Nintendo included. So a shorter video before the next big project, which is also going to be video game related, which means I could use some support, and you could do so over at Patreon. There are two tiers, one is a dollar and another is five, or you can just give whatever amount that works for you. Until next time, thank you very, very much for watching.